I believe we're live now. What's up, everybody? My name is Francisco Hernandez. You already know that. You might know this guy. Who's calling me? Naturally. As soon oh as you God. start a live stream. As soon as they start. Your phone hasn't rang all day. My phone's on mute now. So, yeah, it hasn't rang all day. Sorry, Sorry. Mom. Sorry. Yeah. So, we're going to annoy that. This is, what, introduce yourself, I guess. My name is Robert Hall. I am a editorial photographer from Michigan. Post a lot of videos on YouTube here. Links in the description regarding lighting equipment, specifically flash. I, I think the two of us are kind of uh, pioneers of Godox. Yeah, of, How's yeah. that? We both started using the, their products very early. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed watching them kind of become a crowd favorite with everybody. Yeah, I definitely think that, like, I, I remember the specific date that I got my Godox 8600 B, yeah, the TTL version, which is the Explore TTL, and because I, I remember not getting my trigger the, the day that I got it, and then two days later I had a shoot, but I got it by then. So then I did my very first shoot with it, and I was like, yes. this is awesome. I, my experience with Godox predates Adorama ever selling it. I bought the 8600 before Adorama ever tried mm -hmm. listing it as Flashpoint products. Early. And yeah, yeah, it was pretty sketchy because like you couldn't find any information online. But I just found it on eBay and I was like, wow, this light looks really good. So all you could find at the time was information <laughs> on the 8360. That yeah. was, some people were talking about that. But oh, yeah, that is, yeah, that's one of the things that I remember like looking up because I was like, this light's pretty cool, but there's not a lot of information about it. I do see some people posting it, but like outside the U.S., like in the Strobus group specifically. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, today, oh, yeah. Yeah. if you guys haven't seen, Francisco just posted his video on the Godox V1. Prototype. Prototype, yeah. We'll, we'll get into like what's going to change with this thing, but he kind of showed it, and, and for all purposes, yes, it's a prototype, but for the majority, like everything is going to apply because all the functions that he's kind of showing aren't really going to change. Yeah, the things that are going to change, they're not going to change from the testing that we did, in other words, I guess, would that yes. be the right way to say that? Yeah, so what's going to change about this light is simply the LED. The LED is going to go down from two bulbs to one, and the autofocus assist grid is still kind of up in the air, but they will not be using what is on this device. None of that is stuff that we're really going over in, yeah. in our comparisons or in our content. So, uh, But what we did just have the pleasure, is that the right <laughs> word? Yeah. The pleasure of doing is uh, testing it out against the already established Pro Photo A1. Uh, I rented this just knowing that I was going to be here and in the vicinity of this V1 for a long time. I've done Pro Photo comparisons against Godox products because I like to show how small the gap really is. Yeah. And so this was both of our first experience in using the Pro Photo A1. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into how we both feel about it and how these two <laughs> stack up against Might one another. Might have some idea. Yeah, 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 probably just from the, the nature of it, but uh, we can spoil it by saying there's not much to be impressed about here but uh no, i don't know there's finer points that yeah. people will like to know who are deciding you know we're not just going to grill this yeah um, they're, they're very the, very similar we use so. both today at, a, at yeah we can say that it's not like a secret you guys if you follow me on instagram you would see that <laughs> we shot with it today both of the lights and you know they're both well one calls itself a strobe my opinion on that they're there but you know we use both of these speed lights today and it's, they're both lights. They're not gonna do, you know, anything other than provide light. So that's like the easiest way for me to say that. Yeah, if I could do a PSA while I'm here, I, I hate the marketing that's out there that says like brown head, therefore better, softer light. Uh, it's not true. Their their first promo drove me nuts when it said that you know this was a soft light. They're they're basically like trying to get people who really aren't well informed about how lighting works and tell you that because this is round, this is the only thing that can produce soft light. And that's just not true. Uh, we've got photos when we make dedicated videos on this, of this thing five feet away. It's not soft, guys. It's not a soft light source. And for thoroughness, neither is this. This isn't going to be a soft light source five feet away. Yeah, I, I like that Godox didn't aim that the, this light as, or claiming it that it was soft light at all, because honestly, if and I was I was told to rephrase it this way and I, I agree with it. If the if any light source is small relative to the subject, it's going to become a, a harsh light. It's not going to become a five foot octobox out of thin air. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be harsh. Yeah, you can't fake size. Relative size is the only thing that really makes soft light. 
Dude, sounds like I, we're I, in a fishbowl. I bet you. Oh, uh, let's try and fix that real quick. The audio. What do you think? Oh, cause maybe because of this echo in my room. I don't know. I'll get like a, one of the sound. All our settings look, make it look like it's good. Yeah, can you guys give us a couple comments on the audio right now so that we can see if it's if it's good or not? Yeah, what's happening? Are we too loud? Are you hearing fans? We'll be quiet for a second. Tell us what you hear. Okay, hopefully yeah. you can tell us and we can try yeah, to make a better I got an old better. MacBook. I'm sorry, guys. It's like heating up all the place. We yeah. totally could have run this on my could've, MacBook. Could've... <laughs> you know, that thought process is there, but... Very echoey. You still have a very little echo. A little echo. It has an echo. Is it like the mode? It's like on the front one. It's on. Watch these two guys try to figure out audio. Oh, Jesus. Maybe bring the mic closer. <laughs> Volume? Okay. Is the echo too much where it's like going to ruin the video? If it is, then go ahead and just let us know that right now, please. Mm. <laughs> Reverb is going ham. <laughs> I saw your comment before you retracted it. You meant ham, right? Double audio a bit. So maybe they're hearing the uh, the MacBook audio. Too. MacBook. Oh, I'm an idiot. No. Maybe. Well, okay. no, I don't think that's playing. I mean, maybe. like, uh, I just mean it's, it might be not muted on OBS. Like, yes, yeah. muted. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Sorry, guys. Boom. Problem solved. Well, that should sound. Can you at least let us know that it was like. We don't have to repeat ourselves. In other words, like it was enough to at least understand yeah, us. Yeah, it's clean. We're just double. We're good, guys. That yeah. that should have done. Yeah. Right now, as of now, we should be good. Sorry about that. All right. Solved. Okay. Ah. So from there, I mean, what? There's really nothing to to repeat. Yeah. Um, basically, we both use the lights, and they're both extremely similar. Uh, yeah. And in some cases, this is a tiny bit better. Um, I don't know, should we just start with like yeah. experience and stuff? Yes. So I'd say the most upsetting thing about using this Profoto A1 is the battery life. The battery life, it not is it just like less than the V1? I mean, this is like embarrassing. We we didn't we're down to about a half. We were uh, using this more today, I think. Oh, we we're definitely using the V1 yeah. more. But like let me let me paint a picture for you guys. We took it out, it was charged or maybe at like 95 percent like you could kind of see a slice yeah but, yeah it was like probably just below 100 percent, something like 95 something and i wanted to run it through power test so i had really formal information about how it compared to this in terms of power and we ran it through we did a few tests to set it up and then we ran through the entire power range twice yeah. we looked at the battery now so this is not all full power flashes we started at 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 Went down, then we went right back up, did it again. Yeah. It's and not like he fired the light at full power 20 times. He, he went lower and lower and lower to test yeah. the different things about the Maximum, I, I'd say we fired this 40 times at those across those powers. Yep. And it was at like 40% power by the time we were done. I had to put it on the battery just or on the charger just so we could shoot yeah, with it. Yeah, I was because we, we just did a shoot with it, but he tested both of these lights with the different power outputs and. He was start. He needed to charge the Profoto A1 before our shoot with that light, um, and I was th I was thinking I was like, do you want? Are you sure you don't want to charge the V1? And he's like, nah, <laughs> don't even worry about it. Because so, I know it's gonna do you know 600 full power flashes or whatever. And 650, look, 650. look now. Yeah, and it still shows three bars on we the. We just use this more at our shoot, and this has three bars, and it wasn't charged in between. Yeah, it didn't. The tests. We didn't charge that before the shoot. We did charge the A1, and it's still at less battery right now. It makes so no sense. We had like to charge the, it twice. And you know what? We're going to leave this on for the entire duration. Yeah. Um, oh, we'll, that's another thing, right? We'll show you guys right now. It's it's right about 50%. Yeah, let's see if we can. Um, we'll see if you guys can. I don't know if you can see that clearly. It's a pretty well-defined display. But, um, yeah, it's right around 50%. We'll yeah. see what it is when we're yeah, done with this it. stream right now. So, yeah. um, because I, I feel like it has something to do with just, like, how it's displayed. Maybe either the display or, like, I think the air, I think it's constantly trying to like search for a, oh, re a receiving signal. That's crazy. Um, whereas this, it has a pretty optimized way where it's only looking for a signal when you change the power or you hit, yeah, hit so, the fire button. So that light is you know, actively looking for 
Think of it like it's like uh, this phone is not in airplane mode right now. This is in airplane (laughs) mode. This is not in airplane mode. That's my only assumption because that's the only thing that could potentially explain why it's just losing battery. So we're going to see what this does. We won't fire it a single time during the stream. And we'll see how much power we lose over the next hour. Fred, I just left the title like that because I was just I typed it on accident and I was like, <laughs> let me just leave it like that. <laughs> that was funny. Profile um, to be one. Right? Yeah. So I don't know. What What do you want to start with this? I mean, what do you guys want to know most about this? I yeah. Feel let, let us let, you know engage with us. Let us know your thoughts or any questions that haven't been too repeated. At least because like we have been seeing a couple comments before that is like. For example, a lot of people are wondering what's the power output of the Godox AD200 compared to the V1. And it's just, I don't know, it's just something that I wouldn't want to compare because it's just, one's a strobe that's three times the power of a speed light, and one is a speed light that's just maybe a little bit stronger than a normal speed light. Well, I mean, opinion. yeah, I just don't think, a lot of people thought that this was going to be like way more powerful than it is. Yeah. And it's not anywhere near the yeah. 8200 this just want to be clear about that very much the same as the v860 in terms of power so like that notion should just be thrown out the window so you can expect an 8200 to be three times as powerful as this maybe it, it's a hair funny less. because the um i know that, like watt seconds is not like the best output like to, to give out it's terrible but, but yeah but like Profoto claims this Profoto a1 is 78 watt seconds i mm. think and the godox they don't have like, an actual number that they gave out not on this, think. but that's probably accurate because this is going to be about one third of a speed of a eighty two hundred two, and the eighty two hundred is two hundred watts. But I wasn't the point I was going to get to is like it's like the same output in the in the reading as this. Yeah, so yeah. like, but so, seventy eight is one third of two hundred. I'm just saying like oh, they, they amped up the 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 seventy eight watts because like in my head I always think of like speed lights at sixty sixty five ish. Mm-hmm. And they, they're like, oh, no, this one's 78. So yeah. kind of like hyped it up a bit, like saying this is more powerful than a normal speed light. It's which not. It's, it's, I would say like with confidence that it's not. It's, it's a speed light. Yeah, we tested this right up next to the V860 version 2. They're identical power, whether you're bouncing it, whether you're, uh, you know, flashing into a wall. Yeah, we metered it. Like, yeah. I'm not a meter guy. That's <laughs> why Rob's here and we're like, let's meter this thing. So Yeah, we used uh, Sekonic L858D meter. Uh, we, we metered it bounce we were kind of playing around here last night to test and see if it was going to be pretty close and it was and then today is when i actually set it up for one of my videos we put them right next to each other um three feet away 36 inches pro photo a1 this measured at f22 this measured at f22 and the v860 version 2 was f16 point and nine tenths of a stop all three are identical Yep. Um, so yeah, this is not more powerful than your run of the mill speed light at all. Yeah, it's not more powerful and it actually is giving us less battery life, a lot less battery life than the Godox V1 here. So what's going on here? Yeah. And it's trip it's was it quadruple the price? Four times. Yeah, quadruple the price. Of the Godox, yeah. Yeah, but even double the price of a of a Canon six hundred EXRT. So how often does it misfire? I didn't have a misfire in either of these. Well, I'm not sure why, but like this on my Sony. So this is the Canon version, but like Godox, it's supposed to. Yeah, because this is like on standby, so I don't want. I want it kind of to be more fair to the, to that that being on. It's like I want both. To oh, be this on. falls out out too though. Oh okay. Yeah, um, I already wake it up twice already. Oh, okay. Um, standby. I'm putting standby off. Okay. I'm gonna leave the pro photo and give it any chance it can to <laughs> keep its battery. Um, yeah, leave it on. What was I just saying? What were we saying, guys? Yeah, run that <laughs> Sorry. back. Yeah. Oh, um, how often does it misfire? Yeah. So the pro photo is this is not like, sponsored by Five Guys. So just it's a Canon, Canon model, but just like Godox, if you use a other trigger, it'll trigger all the functionality, HSS, everything, perfectly fine. And I had to, like, change the mode of my Sony, which I've never had to do. Like, I've never yeah. turned that wireless flash on on my Sony to trigger the Godox. Yeah, in other words, like, he was using the Godox V1 fine with the same settings that he always uses with off-camera flash with Sony or with the Godox products. But then when he put on the Pro Photo A1, he it needed... It wouldn't to, trigger at all. Yeah, he yeah. Wouldn't tri- it wouldn't trigger, and he needed an activated flash mode. And, yeah. And honestly, it's not as intuitive as a lot of people... Like, I know that's something that's kind of just said every now and then that pro photo just works it's very intuitive i didn't have to look at the menu and 
Like, we tend to be very knowledgeable guys, especially Rob Hall. Like, I, I really think that he knows his way around things without looking at a menu. And he, like, yeah, all flattery, right? But, like, no, but he, he was, like, looking a little, a little bit into it, making sure that, you know, everything was right. And then everything was right on the Profoto A1. But then, again, with that flash mode in the camera in the A7R 3 he needed to enable something for it to actually pick up and, and work. Which, yeah, which is something it was I've, an never extra had to, yeah, yeah. I've never had to turn that on. And we were sitting there taking it on and off the trigger, like, why yeah, isn't like, this working? On? But once once it was working and connected right yeah. with the Sony, no problems with misfiring. It fired in HSS, perfectly fine. Um, and that's kind of been my experience with this. You'll often hear about misfiring, especially with Sony users with the Godox lineup. But 9 out of 10 times, I find that they mm. haven't tried a different channel. So they could be yeah. facing some radio interference. Radio interference. They uh, they don't they don't have their flash set to fill flash, which is something you need. Or they yeah. have, they have electronic front curtain sync on. In other words, user error does exist, and yeah. you you have to keep that in mind because I get questions every now and then from people. And lately, I, I haven't been, had the time to kind of reply to a lot of messages, and it's been kind of a a bit of a blessing in the sense of people actually are doing the troubleshooting themselves and not looking for me to for help. Because they're seeing these issues, and then they're like, "Oh, my bad! It was this issue. It was this small little thing that I, I overlooked." Yeah. So you got a lot of times that, that that's the case. There's yeah, a lot of users out there. Take those it. take those like messages with a grain of salt because they could be just yeah not have it figured out. Yeah, it's not like I don't like to help, but sometimes it's a, it's a very simple thing, and then just looking even at the menu, and I don't like to look at the menu, so it's kind of like just do, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> But uh, if I do have some things going wrong with any gear that I have, and there's a menu, then I'll look at that first, and then I'll ask for help. So I would, I would advise just to do that, just in case I'm not there to available to answer. So. Uh, a quick question that was asked: Are the batteries proprietary? Yes, on the Profoto, proprietary battery in the front. On the Godox V1, it is two Panasonic 18650 cells that are in this, but they are in this proprietary casing. So. I don't know if people, I like that it's in a proprietary casing. I want all one unit, you know, I don't want a bunch of batteries rolling around in my bag. So I like it, but it is two Panasonic 1650 cells, which leads me to believe uh, if you're that interested in it, you could probably crack this sucker open <laughs> and put two new batteries in it, or maybe even try some higher milliamp hour batteries. I might be experimenting with that down the road. We did not advise this. This would void your warranty, <laughs> yeah. Um, Kirwan asks about the locking mechanism and if it's more secure. Oh, I don't even have to think about it. Are we talking about like compared to these two lights or the previous model? Well, I, I don't think know. They're both very sturdy. I don't know. Like, I don't know how it would fit because these are both Canon. How is how sturdy is it compared to the V860 when these are Canon shoes? We don't really. know. I put it on my camera. Yeah, but it doesn't lock the same. Like, you don't connect oh, into those yeah, things sorry. the same. Yeah, if we, like, yeah. and you know what, that's a funny thing that I can mention, because, yeah, I don't see why I couldn't, but I'm actually getting, we're both getting sent the Sony version. a Sony version, and Godex just came out with theirs, and the Profoto A1 doesn't even have that option available. They don't have a Sony version? They don't have a, yeah, if you guys are shooting Profoto, you, Profoto, you know this, that Sony doesn't have a Profoto A1 yet. They don't have one yet. Really? They do not have one. Uh -huh. Yeah. It goes to show how fast these uh, Chinese manufacturers... And I believe the Profoto A1 came out at the end of 2017. So they Something had like a whole year and a couple of months to come up with the A1 for Sony. So, I mean, I understand there's research and development to go on and to make sure everything's fine. But I'm pretty sure when we get our Sony versions that are like the final production uh, version of that, I'm pretty sure it's going to work pretty all right. Or perfectly, not pretty all yeah, right. I wouldn't expect much to, yeah. to, to be a problem in that yeah, way. Like, that's kind of just been my experience. Is like by the time I get a production copy, everything's ironed out. Sometimes in the beta stuff, there's some weird things, but that's yeah. beta light. And we're using this pro prototype version, and it's working pretty great. Like, I don't have any issues with it. Yeah, trigger's fine, power's fine, everything is as expected, and we're using it cross brand, you know? Yeah. So yep. it's pretty impressive. Um, well, I didn't even know that there wasn't a Sony mount. I knew that I had to get a Canon one. I just thought it was about rental availability. No, there's they no. Only they, had they don't Canon even exist. Nikon. Makes sense. If you guys shoot Profoto, let us know if you if you know about that because I'm positive that the Profoto A1 for Sony doesn't exist. Hmm. It's just not out yet. Um, all right, let's see. Digging around in high capacitor electronics is not recommended unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't open up the flash. I would open up the battery. He was just mentioning though. that it's possible. Yeah. 
I'm not saying. And do that it. I know it's inside. Any word on the eighty two hundred Pro? We're not talking about that today. Yeah. Too much. Too much. Yeah, it would just be a long conversation. <sighs> We're gonna talk about the Godox V one and the Profoto A one. What about color temperature accuracy? I do have numbers yeah. on that. Um, surprisingly, so this was kind of like the only surprise that I really found with the V one. This thing's pretty cool. Uh, this is cool as in temperature. It's cool. It's cool light too. The temperature but, reading was cool. Yeah. The the temperature reading on this was I would get a minimum of sixty one eighty and a max of sixty two seventy four. So extremely consistent, but also kind of cool. Uh, this on the other hand, fifty six fifteen was the lowest I saw. Fifty eight seventy three. So two hundred fifty Kelvin drift on the Profoto A one. Less than a hundred. Is the battery going lower? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, it off. is. It yeah. is. The battery's going lower. Yeah. yeah. We haven't done anything. Um, will the Pro Photo A1 make it this stream? That's going to be the question. <laughs> we'll on standby. We'll end it. We'll end the stream when the battery dies. In the okay. Well, so we only got ten <laughs> minutes left, guys. Um, the yeah. So this is a little bit cooler, but only a hundred and. No, 96 degrees did this go from all across the power range. So this is like the most consistent light I've ever tested. I mean, that is insane. That's plus or minus oh, yeah. 50. That's that's crazy. Uh, Pro Photo, still respectable, 160. So you're talking plus or minus 75, which is not bad at all. Those were tested with a C800 colorometer, which is like the indie, industry standard of Cause some testing people color. Are, some, some people are saying like 6200 is warmer. But we're, it's cooler. It's a it's a warmer physical temperature. That's a cooler color. It's yeah. more blue. Yeah. <laughs> well, they that? were saying it was more orange, but I think there's like I know there's something like LEDs. No, they actually no. They, no. No. Like if we turn that light up to a higher temperature, it would turn more blue. Yeah. When it, when it goes to a higher number, it's gonna be more blue or lower numbers. Yeah. Think of color orange. temperature like a fire. The, the hottest physical area in the center is going to be the coolest color. So it's red on the outside, orange, yellow, white, yeah. blue. Let's see if there's any... Uh, oh, talking about the light pattern. Yeah, light pattern, um, very, very I close. I remember you said something about the A1. Godox V1 being more... More even. More even. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's more. a tiny bit more even. But I'm, I'm blown away because... So the a, the H two hundred R the round head for the eighty two hundred. Have it? Do you actually get? It? What? Do I get? It? Nah, nah, they don't need to see it. You know so what the H two hundred R is. Um, that head was like one of the most even lights I've ever seen. But that makes sense because that's a bare bulb going into heavy diffusion. This is not a bare bulb. This is a tube flash, and it's going through a Fresnel head. That's what leads to like ugly hot spots and everything when they're trying to force that light into a specific area. This is by far the most even light that I've ever seen. I'll show samples yeah. when I do a full video of them. it. Yeah, um, blows the V eight sixty version two out of the water and is a tiny bit, to me, more even looking. I still see the Fresnel pattern a little bit on the Pro Photo A one. So um, that's how I know the insides aren't the same because Godox made a better lighting pattern. Um, yeah, and they even said legally in in the letter that. They did their own research and development, so I don't know what yeah. what's going on with the that stuff. But I don't want to even, I don't know if I want to talk about that. But yeah, we won't get into. Let's let them hash out the legal aspects. But for all purposes, this is going to be out in like days. Yeah, days. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we're gonna. You guys are gonna be able to. These are gonna start shipping at least for Canon. Yeah, I would definitely say because there's a lot of people like who either haven't watched my video yet or haven't watched videos on the V1 and just kind of just think that it's a um, a speed light with the round head. But honestly, it's just it's it's more than that. There's the LED in the in the speed light, which doesn't exist in the V862, right? There's mm -hmm. no there's a model in that. And the biggest the biggest benefit is if you're using this as a master, like I do, when I'm controlling three lights at a wedding, um, the interface changes on this are so much improved with the V862 yeah. version two. You can get through. I tested it today for my video. What takes 12 clicks to like change your power setting uh, on your Group C yeah. on a V860 version two is like five. Yeah. Like, I, I was navigating through, and I, I don't think I even got to this. Well, I did. But I was navigating through the V862's menu on to get to radio master mode. That's the map, yeah. Radio master mode, and I was trying to see, you know, how simple or not it was. And I was like, it, you know, it's not as intuitive. And I don't want to use that word. It's not as easy as it is on the V1. It just takes longer. Yeah, on it just takes longer. Too. It's like useless button presses due to poor Have you ever design. used optical optical Hell modes? No. I, never, I don't use the optical modes, so I was glad that they got rid of them 
The whole point right? of getting a radio flash is so you don't have to use optical. Uh, it's just yeah, why would you put it in there? Oh, somebody else next to you is flashing it. I guess it's like if you don't have any, uh, if there's no access to radio because of I'm, some issues. I'm just glad that they got rid of them because there's like we'll buy a dang transmitter. Yeah, <laughs> but we just buy one. It's not that much. Right. Yeah. yeah so I'm. I'm. Yeah. Removing those two optical menus makes it uh, a lot easier to kind of like flip through the different. Yeah, two this. button presses, and I'm in that radio slave mode, which is the one I use all the time. I actually have a question for you guys that I was like faced with in, in my video. I thought the V860 version 2, we can just look up the spec too. Right too. Yeah, but I thought the V860 version 2 had a two second recycle time. Yeah, and I don't, because we kind of know a lot about Godox products because if we use it and we would like to be knowledgeable about them to help other people. And I was, I swear that the Godox V862. Had like a recycle time of at least two seconds or something like that. At full power. At That's full what power. I thought it was. I'm going to look up on Adoram. Yeah, he's actually looking up <laughs> stuff right now. So I just want to say, excuse how we look if we don't <laughs> come all like about appearances. We just got a, we just did two photo shoots today. One from 1 to 3 p.m. And it was super hot outside. This is Texas. And it's like the hottest day since forever for like a couple months. And, and then we just finished the shoot right now from 5 to 7 with the Godox V1 and the Prokoto A1. And... Yeah, um, yeah, it was pretty fun. See, I th I swear when the V eight sixty two, I'm gonna go back to my original video and look this up because I swear <laughs> when the V eight sixty two came out, it was a two second recycle time. So when they started talking about this having you know sub one point five, closer to one second recycle times, I was like, damn, big improvement. But testing them side by side, we can do it live right here. Um, it's actually not much of a difference. You wanna do it? I, I'll do just it at the same time. D pad, huh? You like you just, you just push oh, wait, I'm just going to trigger that one remotely. Right. Put that in Radio Slave. All right. One, two... Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I thought it was the V1. I was like, two nope. buttons? No. Nope. Okay, A? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, all right. All right. Group A. A little, bit of, little bit of space, a little bit of space. All right. It's not in close range mode. Oh, okay. Did that even trigger? It did. I felt it. They're like identical, guys. Maybe like, we should have put the beeps on. Nah, Man. they got it. You, yeah, you guys it can right just there. replay it. They probably can't even see the flash, but it's yeah, like, it was like identical. Yeah, it's identical. They both they both recycle at almost the identical speed, which I swear this was an improvement, but it's not. It's it's about the same. Um, although this is putting like two tenths of a stop more power. Oh yeah, not yeah, even that's measurable, true. but hardly measurable. Hardly matters, and it will only show up in certain modifiers. Hey, don't miss out. On uh, my purchase at our of the V60 version too. Um, okay, what else do we got? Because what are people asking? See you later, optical. I'm glad to hear people <laughs> people agree with that. Um, too many menus. Yep. Ja, 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 I just checked. Just... Yeah. Let's. What? I don't know. What did we miss? Yeah. Zoom range. Both are uh, the 28 to 105, and then the Pro Photo. It's like it doesn't actually have. Oh my gosh, the battery. Yeah, I'm seeing it go lower and lower. Um, so the, let's see, I'll get the numbers on the, oh wait, it doesn't actually have physical numbers, so I'm not sure exactly. I know it's wide to narrow. I think it's somewhere in like the 24 to 105 or 28 to 105, but there's like these symbols. So you just got these like parabolas that to choose from. And same thing that happens if you twist this, it just, you see the symbol change. So you don't really get the hard number like you would um, on here this one is 28 to 105 i would rather have the number I, i'm not a fan of not knowing exactly i guess i mean the only time that matters is if you're like trying to zoom it to a specific lens but the, you're right if you're like i want a 50 i just millimeter, want a number yeah i would yeah. just like the number i'm not a fan i i, I do like how i do like the interface of it looks the, pretty it, yeah it looks pretty it's really nice but if it has to be at the cost of the battery life then i'd rather have a less luxurious Here's, ah what the heck this thing is literally hot right now, and we have not flashed it since we've been we here. We flashed both of these the same amount of times, and this is warm. This is actually warm right now. Well, I ha we haven't. We flashed this one. We haven't flashed this. The recycle time is the same on the V860 in this. Oh, that's what we, <laughs> that's oh what we just tested. Where are you? <laughs> Sorry, guys. But for those of you who just joined, we just tested the, the, flash, uh, the flash recycle time on both the V862 and the Godox V1. And it was pretty much the same, but we haven't even flashed the Profile A1, and right now the battery's warm. That's weird. 
Like the whole the whole like interface right here, like inside of this interface is warm and not an update on it yet, but like the battery is clearly dropping. Yeah, so. I can see the battery dropping. Like, like it was like a little, little less than half, and now it's like closer to like. It's like forty percent now. Yeah. Um, can you cannot over? Okay, let's get this out of the way. No, neither of these are gonna be like overpower the sun type lights. Um, I hate that term for starters. Yeah, overpowering I, I, the sun. I the reason why I hate it is because there's a lot of definitions out there. No, there's no. Like, I think the definitions vary, and then, like, some people say overpower the sun, and it's, like, about to be night. And I'm like... Yeah, so let's talk. Let's set some clear parameters here. Can you use this to um, yeah, have a dark sky? Can I sh is it bright enough to shoot in harsh daylight? Yeah, that's what I like. Harsh daylight, 12 o'clock, your sun's <laughs> overhead, it's ugly. Um, you want to fill in your subject, and you want to balance with the sky behind you. In HSS, no way in hell. No, yeah. One thing that I want to make a dedicated video about, and I think you're going to hit on that in that video that you're going to make. Um, don't is that, tell Yeah, well, I'm, I'll keep it a secret <laughs> for now. But like, um, yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> like, just in other words, just keep in mind high-speed sync is not the end-all, be-all. It's not going to make your, your light stronger. Yeah, high-speed sync is it's pulsing the light at a lower power multiple times in order to cover the entire curtain. Uh, as it as it reveals the sensor, so it has to be at a lower power. Yeah. And the 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 higher the flash duration of a light, the more light it's going to lose when it goes into high yeah. speed. Yeah. The sync. best way I could try to describe it as simple as possible is if you imagine like strobe lights, you know, lights that just blink off and on and on, or off and on. Like if you look at it, I wouldn't say look at one, but strobe lights go off and on. They flash, in other words, off and on. If you keep in mind, like, it's at a level of intensity that's not too bright, like, blindingly, well, kind of, but, like, imagine in a light next to it being extremely bright. Like, that that light that's flashing on and off, it's not going to be as bright as that light that's just immediately bright. Yeah. I don't know. That makes sense in my head. I hope it made sense for some of you guys. I think, but, of, it, I think of it like headlights. So, if headlights and you have a little bit of battery left in your car... And what can you do? You can either hold your lights to be bright for like one full second, or you can flick them on. Well, no, oh. That would be at the same power. So that's that's a bad analogy too. You know, it's just it's just in other words, like the light can flash bright, or you can divide it it's into smaller. smaller bursts. So that smaller burst is high speed sync. So in other words, it's smaller, it's less. So my summary would be <clears throat> would be would be if you want to overpower the sun, don't use high speed sync. I, and I don't know why, but there's a lot of knowledgeable photographers out there who have YouTube, YouTubers, photographers, that say, if you want to overpower the sun, use high-speed sync. And I never understood this because they know so much. They're so knowledgeable. But that's completely wrong. You don't use high-speed sync to overpower the sun. Yeah, don't get us wrong. High-speed sync is awesome for taking yeah, visual control it. with I your love aperture. It. Yeah, it's I use great it every tool. single shoot. But like the idea that you're gonna get an 8200 because it has high speed sync, so you can overpower the sun. That's just not how it works. Yeah, uh, th that's just the best way I want to simplify it. If you want to use the light to the max capacity that of the light that it offers, using high speed sync is not doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use high speed sync and I love it, but I know that I know that if I needed more output from my light, then I will go outside of high speed sync. And I will shoot. And that's why. It. And that's why you use like an eighty six hundred Pro or an uh, Explore four hundred Pro. Yes. You know that those are capable in high speed sync. Yeah. With the distances that you use. Yes. You're not going out there with like an eighty two hundred. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be powerful. Yeah. I, I just want to be very clear with you guys because sometimes you know in a formal video I'm not as clear as I am in a live video maybe, but. Um, I use my strobes and my lighting at very close distances because of one reason. I love soft light. I just love soft light. It's very flattering and it makes people look pretty. And that's just my preference. But if I used lights far away, maybe I wouldn't use high speed sync. Maybe I would use ND filters all the time. So, and the reason for that is because if you use high speed sync further away, for one, using high speed sync is going to reduce that power that you have. It's not using it to its max capacity. and you just want to use it to that max capacity if you aren't going to be using it very close. Because sometimes, if I have a light, like sometimes, I'm not even exaggerating here, sometimes I have a light like maybe a foot, two feet away to use it very bright. 
uh, to use it to, to a lot of capacity because of the inverse square law because it's very close so I'm using a lot of that brightness and I'm using it in high speed sync but if I wasn't using high speed sync I could probably get the light maybe two feet away so and now of course you would reduce the softness of the light but you would be using it better in other words because you're using it to that actual capacity of it you know that's capable yeah yeah what he, what I said what he said oh the the saconic yeah, this is uh, what the light that we use. I almost, before I say these numbers, the I'm just going to like prove it live. Is this the high-speed yeah. sync one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I just want to m make sure you guys know that there's not a lot of uh, uh, light meters that have high-speed sync capabilities. I'm not sure if it's the only one, but I know that it's one of them. Yeah, at least that does it semi-accurately. Yeah, because we really wanted these tests to be accurate. So he has a light meter that has high-speed sync uh, capabilities. LA58, but... What I wanted to bring up real quick, and we're going to flash this once at its minimum power. Sorry, hopefully it can handle <laughs> it's that. Lower, it's still going it's down. Lower. Um, okay, so we're going to flash this once. Um, the one thing that I was like blown away by, uh, we'll start with this. I'm at two, if you guys are counting for this battery watch. I'm going to take this Seconic meter, and we're testing the flash duration. So the Pro Photo at its minimum powder, power got one. 13,100. That's that's really good. That's a T.1 flash duration, very, very short flash duration. Granted, 2.0 on a 78 watt light yeah, isn't full? that special. No, minimum. Minimum. Uh, power. I love this. See, I love that. Yeah. I love that. So, this is basically the equivalent power output 1256. We're going to test this one. It's, <laughs> it's higher. It's even faster. It's higher. One. 31,700. That is ridiculous. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen a number that high. That's higher than like the, what is that, quicker series, the QT600 version 2. A studio, yeah, studio show completely designed. That's higher than that can get to. We're going to jump up to 164th real quick. Um, at 164th, 19,300. Uh, we'll see when it surpasses the Pro Photo's minimum. Uh, one, that's about equal. So 132nd on here, on the Godox V1, is getting us the same T.1 flash duration as the Pro Photo A1 at its minimum power. This is how I know they're not the same on the inside, right? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's completely obvious. Yeah, that's, that's for, really For anybody impressive. lost out there, there's, it's, there's faster flash durations on the Godox V1 than there are on the Profoto. So it means it has more action freezing potential. Yeah. Um, so you can like, if anybody wants to freeze action, then I would be comfortable in saying that the V1 would be, do a better job of doing that. Yeah. No. Yeah, I was just seeing um, some of these. Some people have asked if there's there's a bracket yet for the Godox V1 to use with bonus mount modifiers. There's not at the moment. There's not. Yeah, it should. Do. I was thinking it would come out alongside it. Yeah, but maybe I was no hoping one's really for that talking too. about it. Yet. Yeah, um, I'm hoping for that too, guys, because I, I right now I'm using the Fotec, um, Fotec 36 inch soft lighter, Fotec soft lighter 36 inch, um, and I'm not a fan of that honestly. So I would rather use one of my, you know, my 34 inch you know, glow easy lock beauty dish. I love some that. Some type of Bowen softbox. Yeah, box. something yeah. that's Bowen's mount that I have. Uh, I'm not a fan of umbrellas. Just that's just how I am. Just like the operation is setting up, I'm not a fan of that. I like to just put it on, lock it, and then shoot. Um, does it work with the R2 Pro S trigger? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, guys. All the Godox, well, a lot of the, like 90%, I would say, of the Godox products all work within the R2 X Pro or X system, the radio system that Godox uses. So, yeah, they will work with the R2 Pro transmitter or the Godox equivalent naming of that same device is the X Pro transmitter. Or the um, R2 Pro Mark II transmitter. Yeah. Yeah. R2 Pro 2. R2 P2. <laughs> R2 P2. <laughs> uh, what else? You two have another go. What? All right. Um, let's see. Let's talk about what else do we got? CRI was pretty much identical. 98, 97. That's a measurement of how well they re accurately reproduce colors. Um, yeah, both were really high. The Pro Photo for splitting hairs was 98, while the Godox V1 was 97. Not worth quadruple the price, in my opinion. Yeah, that's hard to tell. Uh, power throughout the range, let's say. Still on? Pro Photo? Yeah. Barely. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so the, um, the Pro Photo A1 at its uh, max power, three foot test, F22. 
Lowest power F1.4, so I think that's a perfect nine stop power range. Yeah, eight. And then the the V1 was actually 9.2 stops power range. It got down to F1.0 and eight tenths of a stop. So they're both billed like exactly for what they, they list in their specs. And they're both really accurate at like getting the power um, across the different, across the power range, it accurately steps down really evenly. So they're both ex exceptional at that. Um, so yeah, my, oh, here's a little thing. Oh yeah, and I seriously thought, if you guys shoot with the Profoto A1, I seriously thought, I think I saw it in a video, but I guess I was dreaming it. It's, it's the other thing that we saw at Photokina. That's oh, what it was. Oh yeah. The Jimbe product. Okay, yeah, so I thought the Profoto A1 could, could tilt backwards a bit so that you can bounce it behind you for events, for, for example, but it, it can't. I, thought, I seriously thought it could. And when I got this A1 in my hands, I was like, why isn't it, why isn't it bending <laughs> it's back? Stuck. It's stuck. I didn't want to break it either. It's not like a secret switch, right? No. Yeah. If you guys are, know the Pro 41, let us know if I'm wrong, but I, it can't tilt back. When it's aiming forward, it can't tilt back. Because that was something that like we saw in the V1, and we were like, ooh, that was smart. Yeah. You know, to be it, able to tilt it. This is its forward tilt, and it gets about 45, eh, 30 degrees yeah, backwards. Yeah, it's something like 30, 30 something 32 32.8 32 yeah. <laughs> 32 um, yeah it tilts a little bit backwards it's great if this is your camera now we're going over the shoulder you get backwards bounce light it's like a it's like a default for wedding photographers yeah. for, for a long time when i would shoot events i would bounce the light up if you do that and you know you know this you would get raccoon eyes mm -hmm. you'll get shadows around the eyes but by tilting a little bit back it's basically like creating i would say like creating a softbox well, I mean, essentially, you're creating like uh, an angle of light where yeah. it comes downward in front of the subject, yeah. as opposed to just above them. So yeah, so if you're if you're bouncing up, then it's gonna get those shadows around the eyes. If you're bouncing a little bit up and back, and if you have like a flat white ceiling, for example, then it's gonna fill in that light. Actually, here's a perfect example. This is what happens if you bounce light directly straight up, and this is what happens if the light is bounced oh, yeah. in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. So having that ability for an event. Um, to bounce it a little bit back with the without having to kind of rotate it and then bounce it a little bit back yeah that's always been one of the things that like worried me about these flashes is because it's a very rigid turn yeah so i was like doing this all day yeah to turn it and bounce over my shoulder and well, then switch to bouncing well forward. i would use this one and i i know when i would for the times that i would shoot events i know that if i'm have it like this and i want to bounce it back i always got my hand ready like this like or, oh my bad, the wrong way. You almost uh, broke uh, that uh, thing off. I know that I was gonna go like, and then bounce it a little bit behind me. Yeah. Like I had that turn ready, so like the fact that I wouldn't have to be able to do that, just eliminating any steps and making your life easier, especially if you shoot events. And I like that because I do bounce back. I never bounce up. People make fun of all the time, like when you when you're happy about something that gets rid of a second, but when you do that second fifty times a day. 50 times a year, it adds up. 25, you know, thousand times. I don't know. And in that, that second, right. can make the difference of getting the shot or not at an event. Right. Fast paced event. Yeah. So it's, those things help. And I'm, I'm down for anything that'll take away a second that I'm doing all the yeah. time. An example would be heat, and then, heat issues yeah. whatsoever. No, we didn't experience any heat overheating issues with either of these, yeah, not neither. in high speed sync, not in um regular sink and we were out in 95 degrees today yeah shooting. yeah it was about 90 degrees oh yeah we shot later it was yeah. 90 yeah. yeah about 90 degrees um and yeah we were shooting at full power oh yeah yeah, yeah. We, we were shooting to. at full power we had to i have actually a picture that i i, I like with the pro 4 a1 and also some with the v1 i have both i shot with both today and yeah i'll, I'll show you guys how close i had to get to actually get anything usable there's no crop in these umbrellas out of frame <laughs> it's not great there yeah it was so close when when we were in really bright it's in sunlight. texas and it's a bright sun and yeah so you can't you just can't use it far away and expect to be the same thing as like a high powered stroke yeah when we were trying to balance it with a bright sky you're pretty much direct you can get maybe five feet out of it um and then indirect What's using a bounce modifier you were like right on top of it how we doing? We're, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make we're it. We're gonna make it unless we start talking about other stuff. Um, I, I don't know that there's gonna be anything else for us to really address between these two. Um, everything else works the same. HSS works. How about max on the meter? I don't even know what the max on this Siconic meter is for flash duration. Be curious. 
So, Rob, is there any good arguments for pro photo owners for the A1? Well, yeah. I mean, if you're a pro photo owner and you just need something on your speed light, here's the thing. If, if you've been a pro photo user for the last decade, you've lived without a speed light for this long, I don't know why you all of a sudden need one. Yeah. Um, Especially if you're not an event shooter. Right. Yeah. I can understand not needing a speed light being in like a studio space or something like that. Or, um, you know, even high end editorial photography, commercial photography, don't really need a speed light. However, like, if you are maybe somebody who uses Profoto in your studio and you'd like to use your B1 on weddings, but you need a flash on camera, so you've been using something else, yeah, you can make a case for the Profoto A1. I think they could have done better, especially for the price. Um, right now, I, I feel like this is this is kind of where I'm at with the 8600 Pro for his B1X. This is not only one-fourth the price and it's a substitute, this is one-fourth the price and it's outperforming it in some areas very close like, yeah i mean the power identical whatever that's a win when it's one fourth the price you would, evenness of light you would win. assume that you would assume that having a tr quadruple price tag that it would just outshine the v1 in every way and it's even worse in some aspects like the battery life yeah well and that's the thing too the pro photo part of the thing that you pay for with pro photo is build quality and you know quality assurance qa making oh, yeah. sure everything's when we checked. already got this thing in our hands and yeah this thing is like on fire right now in my hands yeah, not being it like? used i just don't understand it's warmer than me right now <laughs> um yeah and and i've i've talked to a few people who have said that this is a nightmare for rental houses because it's what they're servicing the most and oh, also wow. it, yeah a lot of because what I've seen, because I talk to a lot of people, not just Godox users, and some things that people who have been, like, able to, like, talk to me about their experiences with the Godox, um, the Godox, the Profoto A1, is they said that they feel like when it, the uh, Profoto is on the camera, it feels like it's not even sturdy. It feels kind of wobbly. Like, and I, and actually when we're just holding it, we kind of you kind of feel that as well. Yeah, it's weird. Like, there's play to the head. Now, this is a rental. So who knows who had this before and if they smacked it around a little bit or something. <laughs> but if this is how it comes standard, it, it does feel a little bit concerning uh, how yeah, much it wobbles. Yeah, if we had like an official this... shake test of like something that was just on a, like doing this, you would you would hear the sh the noise that the pro photo is making. Mm -hmm. Like he tried to do that right now. But like you can just hear like a little bit of a uh, That's pro photo text messaging me. <laughs> get offline! <laughs> <laughs> Sending us a legal, How'd you get this? A legal letter. Um, yeah, <laughs> this isn't defamation. No. Yeah. Um, so PewDiePie. subscribe to PewDiePie. So, um, yeah, ultimately I, I feel like this pro photo, like you need to be able to prove yourself that you're worth this thousand dollars. And when things that are happening that like we're experiencing today, where this battery is just dropping and dropping and dropping, um, for no apparent reason, not getting any use, that's not something that you you're paying a thousand dollars for you're yeah. paying a thousand dollars to not experience that anything at all whatsoever right. it's a thousand dollars for a speed light that could cost sixty dollars could like the tt 600 not to be okay ignore that part let's say 250 yeah yeah <laughs> 250 is fine for all the things that it's featuring on the on the v1 yeah, i'm of the belief that with these products at this point in, in time you're paying more for them to continue their cycle of marketing than you are for the quality of product yeah that's kind of my opinion Yep. Same um, here. Yeah, let's uh, we'll answer some other questions so that you guys can still follow along. Um, it's definitely more than halfway uh, what it started with with its battery. It's lost over half of that in the time that we've watched. Yeah, actually, some things that I did want to talk about when it comes to the um, Profoto A1, Profoto users that I've spoken to before that had the like the the first batch, I guess, of the Profoto A1. They said that a lot of the issues that they were, that were going on within the Profoto A1 community or people who used it was that there was zoom motor function issues where like I actually have a, like a video that somebody sent me of like there's doing that issue and there was also what's it called zoom and the battery. The battery was not even lasting more than like not even 50 full powered shots. Yeah, there's I mean, a lot, we've seen posts where people had it on standby for an hour and it just died yeah i want to say there's at least one video out there but now that, that was supposed to be like an error and fixed yeah and resolved yeah or... my, my point is that you're paying for profoto and none of these issues should exist 
even in the first batch. Like, that shouldn't be an excuse. Oh, well, it's the first batch. Well, no, you're paying $1,000 for a speed light strobe, and it shouldn't have any of those if issues. If your light doesn't meet the specifications of that it's listed online, it doesn't matter what price it yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Like, if it says if, 350 pounds... Po- if I got this time. in the mail and it had a 1.7 second recycle time, well, it fails to meet the, the specifications that it's listed and sold to me as. Yeah, so that's a it's failure. listed at 650 full part shots. I do like more than likely we probably will test it. Like how many shots it will actually I'm give you? That You're not shit. gonna test that. No. <laughs> I don't want to test that either, guys. So people have always asked. I'm not sitting on my couch and like doing yeah, pop, 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 pop. Well, because pop, pop. if you're doing, you have to do it at full power, right? And you gotta give. And time then you're for gonna get overheat, and then you're gonna get into. Yeah. It's gonna take hours. Forget yeah, all that. Yeah. Does like, it like like what? Here's my my test is like I put these in my bag for like three weddings. I'm speaking about the V860 version too. I'll put these in my bag for three weddings and shoot three weddings in a row and never look at the battery because yeah. that's how much yeah, you like use for, it. Yeah, like we were saying today, we were worried about the Profoto A1 lasting us the shoot that we just did with it. The Godox V1, we're like, don't even worry about it. And that's how I feel that the, a lot of Godox products are like that. Specifically, like for, for people who know the Explore 600 TTL and the Explore 600 manual, you know that the battery life is really great on it. I still love that strobe and highly recommend it to this day. And it's one of the things that I remember experiencing. I'm like, I used this strobe for like three shoots and it's still doing a lot. And I use it at full power in sunny, bright Texas conditions. And I, I was just a fan of it. I still love that strobe. I have a blog post on that strobe. Cause it was like a love letter because I was like, this is awesome. Because <laughs> I used 18Bs before and I used other, other types of strobes and it was just a headache. And then the Explore 600 TTL, I was like, this is the one. This is the one. What is your opinion about the plan of the Sekonic light meters with Godox radio included? Oh, yeah. You, you got the email. Well, I think everybody got the email like that. Like, yeah. We'd I, love to see if you want to feedback about Godox. Yeah, they were trying to like market research and see if people are interested. Cool. I mean, I think it's it's nice and it's showing you the direction that the companies are going. I'm about to say the same thing. You know, it just shows that how popular of a product Godox has become. Um, yeah, that's cool. I... I don't know how many people are really in the market for that, but for those that are, yeah, they I like need it. I like the market shift in the photography industry, specifically with all camera flash, because B and H didn't have them for a while. Mm-hmm. I want to say I'm just thinking out loud here, like maybe two years. They picked them up in like beginning of 2018, but yeah. Godox was like 2016, a little bit earlier too, right? Cause you, yeah, I had two T six A fives at the end of 2015. 2015? Mm-hmm. Jesus. End of it, yeah. I got my 600s in January of 2018 or 2016. 16. So yeah, so I, my point is that they they eventually got it, but but um, it's just it's it's a good indication when a big company out there was like, yeah, we'll take on that product that was rated as a or as called as like third party and China Chinese made. Even, even though these these phrases are just kind of odd because a lot of stuff's made from out of the, the U.S. Yeah, it's a little arbitrary at this point. I mean, yeah, everything's being made in China. So um, people were saying U.S. made for Profoto. Profoto is Swedish. Sweden. Yeah. It's from Swedish. Sweden. Sweden, Swiss, Switzerland. It's Sweden. out of the U.S. That's yeah. my point. So. Uh, is the battery similar as V860 version 2? Is it worth replacing if I own the 862? I was thinking of purchasing the round head. Does that say Sir? SR1. Got it. Um, <laughs> uh, we're just joking about messages that we get, yeah. including Sir. Anyway, the round, I mean, the reason to get this isn't because the head is round. The reason to get this would be you like the modifiers that you can do the quick access to modifiers, grids, those sort of thing. Um, If this is a nice dual purpose unit for you, maybe if you already are invested in 8200, specifically with a round head that have the extra accessories, the magnetic accessories as well, this fits in pretty well. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Why I would rather have these than the V860 version two is because I can throw this up as a rim light and slap the grid on it. And you know, it's it's, it's a very functional tool. Uh, nothing about this makes me go like, ooh, I need that because it's red, or, or red, because it's round. Yeah. Because I'm never going to use it bare bulb, and I'm never going to experience or benefit from even the quality increase of the head. I do think it's better, but I'm never going to experience that because I'm not going to shoot with this thing bare. I don't know why. Yeah. There was like a thing when like the A1 came out, people were like, it's so good bare. So yeah. No, it's not. It's not, guys. Yeah, it four is, or five feet away, it still I looks like strip. junk. One thing I really want to emphasize, and I will be completely transparent. You can see the raw files if you want. You can see the straight out of cameras if you want. But there's a lot of photos I've seen out there on the Profoto A1 that are heavily, heavily edited and retouched. 
And I just want to say that because it's there's no way around it. That's an actual thing. I can, I can over time I've I've been able to see that photo is retouched up the up the yin yang. So like I have I took photos and in my Godox V1 I I didn't I didn't edit them or or you know intentionally do some things where it would kind of mask the fact that it's harsh light. I wanted to show that it was harsh light because there's no way that having a small light source is going to give you soft appealing natural looking light there's just no way around that and i wanted to show that and some thankfully somebody in the comment section of my video said okay yeah the fact that it has a round head doesn't mean that it's going to be a natural soft looking light and and i, I just want more people to know that yeah. because it's not something that you should have in your head that oh yeah it's going to give me soft soft light no it's not the uh shoot i completely just forgot where i was going with that oh there's like a move there's a move with these lights in marketing where like they've got like they're like oh it's a round head it's gonna look so even and natural and then they show you a sample and they show you a sample with on camera flash yeah and you go ooh everything is like bright and even and filled yeah because it's flat lighting you your your flash is directly over your camera every shadow you create is behind your subject like they can't see it and it's so weird because to me I see a shot of on camera flash and it's like deer in the headlights look. Yeah. And then I'm like, that's not natural not, at all. That's literally looking like a deer in the headlights. It's not How are you saying that it's natural and flattering looking? And for anybody to like say that that's like ideal lighting, um, you know, when lighting is all about making shape out of on a two dimensional medium, I just don't take you seriously as a company. So I don't, I, I hate that trend. And Same. I've seen that with other lighting products as well, where they show it to you on camera. And because it's flat, they're like, oh, it's so beautiful and soft. Nope. Yeah. Show it to me off camera from the side. That's what here. I don't want to sacrifice any more of that battery. <laughs> um, like let's let's put the LED on this. Yeah, exactly. And you guys, you guys can see in my video on the Godox P1. At the very end of it, I used the uh, the modeling lamp on the Godox P1 to show you guys not not just what I can take with it, but also how harsh the light is. And look, you can see that on me right now. Do I look like this is out that you know outside in a nice cloudy day? I don't think so. Nope. What? Well, maybe I'll turn this off. Actually, let you me got turn the off. remote. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, I got the remote it's right here. I'll show what a round head looks like. This is gonna be what. Yeah. The well, actually, this is good. Like. This is good to mask the harshness, because all this soft light right here on us. But take a second, look at us, and then right there. Do we look like we're outside in the nice cloudy day in the natural sunlight? And why you would want to use this? And actually, you know what? We're using this off camera. You want me to put it right in front <laughs> no, of your face? That's terrible. <laughs> You want me to put it in your face right now? Like, there. Yeah, I'm almost, wait, let's get you some Rembrandt. Look forward. Right. Oh, wait. I have to do it with the delay. Oh, wait. Yeah. Right, You're good. Right. Right. Forward. Right. There. There we go. Bam. There's that beautiful, it's a, it's natural a Rembrandt lighting. Woo. I look like a painting, right? <laughs> ah! This is not flattering, guys. And I just, I like to be very transparent with whoever, you know, decides that I'm worthy enough of listening to. This is up lighting. You don't want to use this. <laughs> We're not going to claim that this is soft looking light right here. It's so natural. I'm going to tell a scary story right now. Natural to your campfire. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let me turn on the lights again. enough of that. All right. And that was with the V1 that we're slamming. Yeah. The point is, round head does not magically make and, photos. And that's so. not even that we're slamming the V1. We're just trying to make, you know, make our point that it's just the light that has a round head. That doesn't mean it's extremely soft light. And that's not just... Solely on the V1. How many it's times have we said this tonight? Yeah, sorry. I just, we just really want to make that point across. And that that's probably the last time you'll hear of it. Hopefully. 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 Damn it. How do I turn this off? This video is not... You click the middle. Middle. Again? Boom. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Boom. Haven't this really video is not that. sponsored by these guys. I just... I don't know why I did that. Sponsor me, five guys. Five guys? Five guys is responsible for the food coma I'm about to go into. Oh, yeah. Christ. Um, what else see. we got? Hey, Paul. What's up, Paul? This and the new TTL remote from Profoto made them truly shady. Yeah, that, that Profoto Connect, man. I It's like, I don't know what your goal is, Profoto. Are you trying to make serious lighting tools for this is an out of season professional joke? photographers <laughs> with like huge demands from clients? Or are you trying to simplify lighting? That like, thing is $300. That's, that's the first problem. It's $300. Second, you made controlling light more difficult because now you have to bust out a phone every time. You have to time. bust out a phone. It's not even much smaller than like an x1 trigger it's not that much like shit isn't big why are you worried about that and then you're gonna have a 105 millimeter on your freaking if there's videos uh, out there saying why would i need this 
then that's that's a testament of itself yeah like ambassadors can't even justify that product. <laughs> that's what i said just remember like somebody's out there it's their job right now to promote that product and say it's a good it's a good decision and like yeah. most of the lighting world is like that thing is trash i use godox because it works and it's not it's not expensive well depending on like you know if you want to get the higher end strobes but that's the price of having a higher end strobe but i use it because it works and i'm glad that you guys have been able and the market itself has been able to see that as well that it's a great product you know maybe i'll i'll get it myself um somebody asked have we tried out the new interfit honey badgers unleashed oh no i don't I honey badgers don't give a it's shit it's the interfit um no <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm not looking, so I, I completely look at, like, Interfit, Palsy Buff, um, what other products out there are just kind of, like, well, I feel like Well, Palsy Buff has teased something that they're going to come out with a light, and I'm just, I'm just curious to what it is, but... We talked about yeah, this today. Yeah, we talked about like, this briefly today. The, the gap that some of these companies have to get to even be competitive with, like, the Godox, or even Jimbei, I would argue, like, Jimbei's got a pretty sweet lineup... Um, and then you can get into like pro photo. They've but got I would argue things. that like Jim Bay, they put their audit series, which is you know the the U.S. brand by Adorama. Like they kind of give attention to Canon, and Nikon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Would yeah. They missed to say it? they missed Fuji and Sony. Fuji, they completely Sony. missed it. Yeah. So I like that Godox so is much like, market share went. Yeah, Godox is doing a great thing with having Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Pentax, Olympus. Maybe I missed one. That's already like six. They're doing a good job getting all these different brands. So that's my point. And if more companies did that and not neglect one, um, then that'd be that'd be better for everyone, I guess. I don't see how that's a loss there. Right. Yeah, I, so I have not paid attention to really anything that is not, has a radio trigger on the inside, is TTL high-speed sync compatible. Uh, what else do you need? You need to have a speed light. Uh, a small strobe and a big strobe like that's kind of and my threshold so much yeah and and you have to do all this and be cost competitive and like i just don't see many people entering that market outside of who's already there but we'll see we could be surprised but this, yeah so they're like i'd I love see, to be surprised i see some lighting releases and i'm just like good luck like that's not going anywhere because it's nowhere near unless you're selling to people who are already invested in the system you're not really good on. yeah i like that godox has that ecosystem of lights that gives you so many options and what you want to you know create if you want a speed light that is that is very small and portable that's the the tt350 tt350 oh that's a good question yeah. if you keep going sorry yeah and if you want a, a speed light that has more battery life then you can get the lithium ion version of that tt350 but also keep in mind that it's not as powerful as the normal size tt600 so there's, I'm, I'm, my point is that there's so many options for different things that you want to create. If you want to shoot outdoors with, you know, the sunny, bright sunny day, 600 Pro because it has the most power. Yeah, it has the most power right now of all the strobes. Yeah, 600 Pro. For uh, yeah, on that, like singular like strobe by itself. Yeah. yeah. So there's no, just no, options. No, no, no. Cirrus 800 L from color. Godox. I'm talking about only. Oh, yeah, just yeah. Godox. Gotcha. I, I'm saying that there's a lot of options. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, somebody asked. Will the MagMod grip fit? Uh, I don't know if they asked about the Godox V1 or the A1 grid and gels. Yes, but don't freaking do it. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say. I think I saw that somebody, somebody in a group, something said like, "Yeah, it's possible, but it's like, it looks scary." A, why are you not just using the native <laughs> solutions? Speed light. They're like roughly the same price. Um, B. Uh, it, so yes it fits but you're very likely to wear out your grip prematurely because you're stretching beyond what that thing should stretch um, i also don't know that that's really good for like that much force of something that is not designed to stretch that far to be wrapped around where your flash zooms so if your flash breaks or your grip breaks i don't think it's right for you to go back to magmod and be like my grip broke yeah can you replace it my grip broke early that's wrong because you're an idiot and you put it on something too big that it should be like. it wasn't designed for it yeah it was designed to accommodate a speed light i i know they're gonna run into the issue because like people are so many people are asking like can does it fit yeah, the other thing just too don't try it. this is mm -hmm. like this takes up more room in a bag like it's a little bit awkward um because of the, like the the circumference of the head is oh, yeah. bigger than a v60 yeah. so like you're already gonna lose room, yeah. And I then to put and then to put the mag mod, 
the mag grip on top of it and be like outside. Now you've got like a 70 to 200 or a, a 105 millimeter 14 front <laughs> element on your head. It's just and yes, it works, but I, don't. Do I'm not it. understanding why you would want to do that because when like, there's a grid, there's a cut bounce, there's a. Okay, well, let's call it what well, it is. I'm they both of, implemented. Yeah, I'm thinking of like if you if you want to make you put the mag boob on there, the mag what's it called, mag sphere, like now like, you're getting demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah like there's different things that you can you know it has they were created with these things like the magnetic accessories try, I mean maybe try to use them unless I don't know if Profoto comes uh, uh, it provides the magnetic accessories with no them. they just gave me the bounce card that was all I got the bounce card I didn't get all the other stuff the, on my rental the bayonet or what's it called the bayonet I don't know that, the, the little hoodie thing but the point is that they don't provide that extra stuff that they even having the videos promoting it. Yeah, it's well, it's they're a, they're extra on the V one too. Yeah. yeah. I don't oh know. yeah. I yeah. don't know how much they cost from Pro Photo. Probably four times as much. Let me yeah, let's Google the prices on the the accessories for the Pro Photo A one. Yeah, but let's see if you guys have questions. Now's the time to ask them. We're already past an hour, hour and three minutes now, and I I I would like to think this video has been informative so far. Uh, but if you guys want to know more information that we haven't already covered. Um, just if you've been here from the beginning, if you're just tuning in now, more than likely we covered what you might be th thinking about. So just try to think of maybe like unique questions that might might not have been asked already. So just pre-ordered the A1 yesterday. Can't wait to get my hands on it. A1. Hopefully it's. <laughs> Hopefully you get a good battery. Good battery. Um, just got my first off-camera setup with the 8400 Pro and a couple soft boxes because of your guys' videos for any light. Do you really need massive soft boxes for evenly lit full body portraits? No. Um, you need a, a modifier that will light very like wide, so you need a shallow modifier. You can use an umbrella, really. If, you just, if that's your goal, is evenly lit full body portrait, um, you, can, you can pull that light a ways away. It's going to be a very even light across their entire body. It's not going to be a very uh, defining light. It's not going to create depth and shadows where their body needs depth and shadows or has depth and shadows yeah. a it's, lot of people don't take into consideration the angle as well like if you if you angle it uh very much that it's just kind of just giving them all the attention to like the head and the chest like if let's say for example it's not a big modifier then then maybe just taking it back and angling it a little bit lower so that the spread is like hitting here and it's just it's just you know going across the person i don't know just keep thinking just just experiment experiment just for different ways to achieve a look but i i mean i used to use a five foot octobox all the time and every now and then i still break it out but i don't sh i use it if i know that i want a nice spread of light throughout that subject and and not have to worry about the angle so much if that makes sense yeah i mean it's just a, it's pretty simple the bigger the light the softer the light it's going to be uh, the more it's going to create like smooth tr shadow transitions yeah. into deep shadows, show more depth. Um, you can't fake size of light, so if you're finding that your light looks too harsh, you probably need either your modifier to be closer or your modifier to be bigger. And um, from there, you can get really specific about like the the shape of your light modifier. Look, I'm not fine. He meant he ordered. I think we confused somebody on the uh, A1 because he said he meant he ordered the Godox. The title is wrong, guys. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No, we've uh, we've had some, some gags over the last few days just about all the controversy surrounding. I'm happy to talk about that, too. Um, I don't think Profoto had a leg to stand on with that. And now that Godox yeah. has responded, it's kind of seeming like the way. I totally thought that... that Pro photos coming out and saying that you know the V1 was copied um, or infringed on patents. I totally thought that was just a way for Pro Photo to puff their chest and kind of cling on to you know the belief system that's out there that these are so superior, while not really standing up and proving that through the the actual. Yeah, if you guys hardware. don't know what we're talking about, Pro Photo has threatened legal action against Godox because of their production of the V1. Yeah, they say that it there's infringes a on patents. Yeah, there's a Petapixel article on it. You guys can on check both it out. sides. Yeah, you can see what Profoto initially said. You can see what Godox responded with. Yeah. Um, the weird part is that Profoto went directly to the retailers. The retailers. Yeah. and never talked just to weird Godox at all. Yeah, it's like 
instead of telling Godox, hey, you you're infringing our copyright. What you know? What are you doing? Back off or not? Don't do that. Cease and desist. Cease and desist. Yeah, which is the legal way to go about doing it. And then they went to hey retailers, the guys that are going to be selling this product. You know, you might get into legal issues if you sell this product because you know they infringed on our patent and without providing any information or proof that they did so. Yeah, so that's why I, and now that you hear that, the second side of the story, uh, it really seems kind of kind of sketchy. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm not going to act like I'm a legal master by any means, but what I, what I was seeing that a lot of people were saying, which, which is a true thing, is that if you're, if you're applying for a patent and somebody else, uh, I guess, infringed on the patent, which doesn't, is not the case, um, you have no legal like legs to stand on because that patent hasn't been approved yet. Like things that happened before it, this is just my, like what what I'm what I'm gathering from the inf information that I'm seeing people provide on the comment section. So I don't know if I I, I would actually want to keep saying this because I don't I'm not a legal master by any means. <laughs> but I was seeing that like since the patents are still pending, that there's not any ground to stand on. But Maybe. I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't want to say that's the truth. I think we both agree that if there were patent infringements then we support Profoto winning and stopping this product. Yeah, that's that would be what I would be saying. Yeah, because we support that. Yeah, but if somebody's innovating and and providing things that are unique and and you know and they have that right to to kind of prevent other companies from stealing that technology, then yeah, if the person that's innovating has all that tech and they worked hard for it, I believe Profoto said that they were developing their A1 for four years now. Um, then yeah, I would say the. The person that's working harder should get the, the benefits. Yeah. Although I I don't think that this is either of these are that impressive of a of a release. Yeah. They, I mean, they have upgrades, and if they're worth it for you, then go ahead and get it. But yeah. Yeah. But ultimately, they're more like a it's a collection of technology that we've seen before, packaged nicely and together. All that. But. Yeah, like for example, I mentioned the fact that now with the Pro with the Godox V1, I won't have to like rotate the the speed light all the way around and bounce it. And I was talking about how fast you know sometimes that that couple of seconds by doing that would either make me miss or miss a shot. But again, these are things that you have to justify for yourself. You if it's worth it for you to get that speed light that has that feature that it can bounce a little bit back then yeah, you make that decision on your own from all the information that you gathered from either videos or the listings that you see for these different lights. This is why we hate when you ask, what's the best? Yeah. Like, we, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it depends on you. Tell yeah, me. I honest, Tell me more information. Please. I love helping you guys out directly. I seriously do in the sense that, you know, I'm helping you guys out. But there's things that I just can't answer for you. Because some people will say, you know, should I, get, should I get this? Should I get this? And my, my answer is a question. You know, well, what do you shoot? And how do you shoot? And it ends up, and this is why I've had to stop ask, answering questions um, entirely, because it becomes uh, like more than one hour thing on one person. And if I answer 10 questions a day, that's 10 hours. Accumulated time together, because I just wanna help you guys out and I just can't anymore. That's why I'm gonna make more videos to, to dedicate to um, answering you guys' questions that you guys have asked me all collectively. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. Like we wake up in the morning, like the amount of comments or notifications that you have every every day is uh, it's intense. And we're not even that popular. I don't know how some <laughs> of these big people do it. I don't think they just do it at all. I don't know. But uh, Chinese, Jodux is a Chinese company. I thought they were free from repercussion. No, uh, if you look at like Selens who tried to steal Magmod products, those got completely shut down in the US. Um, oh yeah, that's they, true. It, there might be some lawlessness there that they continue to sell it in that country, but that's not what Profoto is worried about. Profoto is worried about this being. Profoto is worried about this being in the hands of the photographers the in the U.S. <laughs> oh my gosh, the battery life! We fired it once. We fired it once. Um, yeah, I kind of we're at an hour eleven, and I feel like we're wrapping up. But at the yeah. same time, I want to see this go. Yeah, I do want to see this. I want to have a again. Physical this is timer. the timer. This is the timer of when we're gonna end the video. Yeah. So we're saying bye as soon as this thing dies. We'll tell you, and we'll have a physical yeah. time. But uh, that'll be a good piece of information to share with yeah. Profoto. Live, flashed once at full, I believe. Flashed at full? No, F two uh, two minimum power. Minimum settings. power. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, what else we got? <laughs> keep it coming. We got to keep awake yeah. while this thing. Yeah, uh... we want to stay live while this uh, battery is alive as well. Wait, wait, wait. So just if you again, just ask us questions. Does, uh, does Rob's the... here from Michigan. He, you know, make Rep- it worth the, the represent. Video. Represent. Does the V one? <laughs> yeah. But did you just do it wrong? Oh, you got it right. It okay, them, right? I, I thought you went like I this, it and to I was them. like, uh, uh-uh. uh. It's Michigan. The hand, you know what? You guess what? It's a Michigan thing. Yeah. We don't have many cool things. <laughs> oh, that's what we get excited about. <laughs> Somebody asked. Uh, you might have to elaborate here. Does the V1 have a focusing light? If so, can you guys show? Like, does it's the fo- modeling lamp focus? I think focusing light. You mean modeling lamp, right? Modeling lamp. Yeah, we yeah. can show it. I mean, I'll oh wait, I think mod- they mean the focus assist beam, maybe. Oh, uh, the focus, yeah, we didn't talk about this, did we? Yeah, the reason we kind of we skipped over it is because... It's going to change. So this is an AF assist LED lamp. Lamp. This was the first time that they tried implementing this design. And from the early feedback from photographers through the beta stuff that we go through and what everybody yeah. said basically they determined that this was a bad idea and, and that they would not go through with it if you guys want to see what it actually looked like rob has a video with it with some little bit of footage yeah there. yeah my xt x2t X2 video if my my godox x2t video which is a new trigger that they have coming out yeah i show what this looked like it makes sense in the video yeah just, um, just check it out his videos it's a lot of just like a content. red it's just like a red led it kind of looks like a circle no yeah, it's yeah. oval and um, and it, it's kind of like that little AF assist lamp that you have on your camera. Yeah, they're getting yeah. rid of that. Yeah, kind of like I think Sony has this, a, a bit of orange. Or yeah, something. they've got the orange it's like LED. A kind of like a circular. They're terrible, beam. right? They yeah. they don't go far. They're terrible. They basically made like a super one of those, yeah. but it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't give you any contrast. It doesn't give you any lines, which are what a majority of focusing systems are looking for. So. They're going back to the AF Assist grid, but what's uncertain is if they will go to what the V860 version 2 already had, which was passable, right? It's an okay grid, or if they're going to update it and go to a more serious grid similar to what the V862 was lagging behind, yeah. like the Canon 600 or the uh, Nikon SB910. They have these really nice like contrast-filled very narrow grids, Infrared. just lots of points of, of focus. Hell, even Young Nuo did it better. Yeah, I'll they, say they, it. They have, they have focusing memes that just are just a lot better. And the reason why we haven't been able to test these on the Godox prototype here, the VO1 prototype, is because it's Canon mount, and we have Sony mounts. We have Sony cameras. But like I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, I believe we're getting Sony versions of the Godox V1 soon, very, very soon. So expect videos from both of us. Subscribe to Rob Hall, Robert Hall Photography. Yep. Right, Link in the Link description, in the description below. description below. So. Right next to the uh, the merch. <laughs> I need merch. <laughs> Subscribe to PewDiePie. Don't don't do merch. No. Rob, round S bracket. Talk your hook. Talk to your hookups, dude. I told him. I'm like that. One thing I am sick. I will say this. One thing I don't like about Godox is I hate how like how broken their releases are. So 8400 Pro is a perfect example. Why don't we have an AC adapter yet? Why don't we have... Oh, yeah, you're right. An extension. Why don't we have an ex- uh, uh, yeah, extension head? We're, we're closing in on a year, probably? At and, least seven I months. I believe when, even when the 8600 Pro, the AC extension came out several months later? Yeah. Yeah, several yeah, months. Yeah, they've got a history later. of that. Like, fill out your existing yeah. product, complete it, before getting on to the next release, because they're gonna release the, this, yeah. the 8200 Pro, the X2T, the R2 Pro my, 2. My only thought process on that would be maybe they would they would rather put out a strobe, uh, that strobe for people who don't need the extra accessories and they wanna roll it out right away for people that don't need those accessories and then maybe when they get those accessories then we'll roll them out. I mean, I guess Maybe. having it available that's is only, nice. That's me actually trying to think of what... But in that case, you should not be putting the AC adapter in the launch photos oh, yes. of the 8400 yeah. Pro. That's very true. That's so, very true. you know, you, can, you just they need to fill out those products first. So, yeah. like, one thing that I, I don't like, the idea of switching to these V1s, and I'll keep my V862s until this is solved, is where's the S bracket? Where's the new updated S bracket that's actually going to accommodate this? It's going to be tough to accommodate, like, a circle yeah like securely like just think about that you're not going to be it's not a flat edge like the v860 you can just slam the s bracket down like we're going to need something more something just i don't know i can only think of like maybe two sides 
Yeah, like, yeah. And maybe like pinchers, like claws. Yeah. Like that they. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what we'll they're gonna see. do. Hopefully very soon. Cause I love my Glenox or my my uh, Bowens mount modifiers. I like I said before in my video for the V1, I use the Fotic soft lighter, the 36 inch, and I I seriously do not like that modifier. I used it because it's the soft the thing that provided the softest light in my opinion, that was umbrella type. Yeah, I would, say, I would say that. Well, actually, I have a huge 65 inch a 65 inch um, shoot through umbrella, but I was not about to use that because for one, it's just gonna attract. Well, actually. Yeah, it was windy that day when I did that shoot. So if I used it, then it would have been a struggle. Mm -hmm. It was just easier for me to use the 36-inch Fortex Soft Lighter. Yeah. What well, other questions we got? A1 Pro Photo Producte. Pro Photo Adapters <laughs> could do it. They have a round adapter. True. See? What's up with the color gels? Uh, I, that's another. Like, where are the color gels for the My? H200R and this? Or that? Yeah. Sorry. My. These feel... Not perfect. Battery life. Life. Not identical. We might be ending the video soon. I'm looking at the battery life here, but um, yeah, we might be. But yeah, um, I actually, if you didn't know that they're the um, the round head accessory or sh lights for Godox, the 8200 round head. <laughs> excuse me, the 8200 round head, which I have over there. I'm gonna go get it. But um, and then also now the Godox V1, they have an accessory kit like a dome, a grid, barn doors, snoot. AKR1. Yeah, it's called the Godox AKR1 accessory kit i believe um but yeah they have that so that works seamlessly with this with this light and actually it's pretty nice um i wanted to say that one thing that i, I think I, some people have said before with the um with the magnetic attachments that are made for the pro photo a1 is that they're very flimsy or they fall off um and when i used when i, I i'll be honest i don't use Ooh, i have the bounce card if we want to like kind of see we can test it. Maybe we like go like this or something. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, before I because be, I'm not gonna be able to show you once this yeah. actually loses the battery. But uh, like we're getting in the danger zone here. Let me see. So this is one hour and maybe ten minutes. Yeah, a little bit. So you're right. Then one hour and ten minutes. Yeah, one hour and ten minutes. You can see that on battery. standby flashing one time on the lowest output, and it was around like forty something. Forty. I would say like forty five. Maybe 40%? I think we started over half, like 55%. We could just rewind the video. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll check later. Yeah. I'm going to go grab the uh, bounce card for this. Yeah. You want me to give a shout out to you, the thing you're having this weekend? Yeah. Perfect okay. Mixer. Yeah. Dallas. So if you guys didn't know right now, um, if you live in Dallas, Dallas? Dallas area? It's in Dallas. Yeah. yeah in a da if you guys live in the Dallas area or at least close by, there's going to be an event happening. Rob's going to be part of it. Um, I think Kerwin Celestine, he's, he's actually in the comment section below. Uh, comment section area, chat area. Lonnie. Ke Kedron, Lonnie Strickland, Kedron Franklin of 924 Photography, Lonnie Strickland, Savvy. Savvy, what's his last name? John Savvy is his name. Uh, John Savvy. There's a lot of great photographers that you want to check out. Kerwin, Kedron, Lonnie, Rob. John Savvy, uh, Sam Serrato. There's a lot of different. I'll, I'll leave a link to the banner where you guys can see more information about it. But I believe it's happening this Saturday. You guys definitely want to check that out. There's a lot of amazing talent there. Like, seriously, amazing talent. And I believe they're also offering a retouching class. Somebody is there. And amongst those photographers that I named, they're, they do really amazing retouching work. So, unfortunately, I will not be attending. I would like to. I haven't made the decision. <laughs> but I'm giving more attention to the fact that it happens on Saturday and I would have to leave Saturday night, like throughout the night to make it back home on Sunday in, in, uh, in time for Game of Thrones. So, yeah. I mean, I love Game of Thrones. But we're going to go ahead and see if Rob's back with that, what's it called, the bounce card? I got the The bounce card. I have mine over there, so I'll need to get that. So I'll let Rob sit down and you guys can see. Actually, ask us questions because I feel like this light's going to die soon. <laughs> I had to stop and get some Starburst gummies. <laughs> what are you getting? The, this, their bounce card. I got it too. Oh, you got Oh, okay. not the bounce card, but they're magnets. Okay. Um, all right. Ooh, we can answer another question. <laughs> Do they fit one another? <gasps> nah. You try the grid? Nah, they don't fit. It's because it kind of protrudes, the light kind of protrudes a little on the... um. Yeah. On the 
I mean, <laughs> all right. If you like an angle to your grid, push it. <laughs> if you like an angle, yeah. Sure. Demonetize. Um. Okay. Jeez. No, this is fine, dude. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So, some. I remember. It's perfect. Something. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. Like it's not going anywhere. It's actually a little bit longer too, right? Yeah. No, mm, well, they're about the same. About the same size. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just spit everywhere. Eh, hey, whatever. Um, sorry, eating. Yeah, this this video was not meant to kind of like rag on the Profoda A1. There's a purpose in the place for it. Yeah, I like it. I just prefer, yeah, I like it, but I I prefer Godox. It's just a preference, a personal preference. Where's the V1? Over here. Wait, wait, wait. let me put this on right here. Wait, you want to try that bounce card on this one? I just want to see it. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, oh. This is a good one. <laughs> right. Okay. Did it die? Oh, not yet. This is a little stronger. Can that one go on there? It can. <laughs> Profoto, you need a modifier design. <laughs> it fits somebody else's. <laughs> but nobody's going to buy that. Cost yeah, who's going to pay than the more than this? Um, so is it? Yeah, they do fit though. But uh, I do think this magnet is, is a tiny bit stronger. Yeah, yeah, I you can definitely feel the difference. It's not no, yeah, I would say it's a noticeable difference. Do one in each hand. I'll hold them. But one in each hand, <laughs> door. I like I like I can feel the weight better. Yeah, this this you you actually feel like the magnet like saying come here. I don't know how best to describe it other than that. Science. <laughs> Science. Very very scientific. Yeah, and it's, just, it's very gentle. <laughs> gentle. Very gentle. Let me see. I don't think... This is not very scientific at all, but... And then the... What'd you... Now, what'd that prove? This proves about as much as Jared Pullen's sniff test. <laughs> okay. I like, I like this one. Blind test, right? Blind test. We should do that. <laughs> Like, Let's go like interview thirty people at a mall. <laughs> which one do you feel is the magnet? Which one do you feel is better, Magnus? <laughs> but, yeah, but okay, like a timer. But yeah, um, I don't know why we decided to just bring this on, bust it out. But they both have accessory kits that's uh, worthy of noting, I guess. Yeah, the myth part of buying into the system. Yeah, I don't. I I think the accessory kit for the uh, this AKR one accessory. Accessory kit for the Godox V1 is about 60. I could be wrong. I think it's 50. 50 no. something? Yeah. Do they fit vice versa? Jeez. How does the white diffuser, which comes with V1, compare to MagMod? Any suggestions on using V1 diffuser for event photography? It's a dome. It throws light in every direction. It diffuses it really well. There's not much more to say beyond that. Those domes are not for, like advanced control of light there for throwing light everywhere and as evenly as possible to bounce off all of the things so yeah like if you if you shot in a small white room and you wanted to just bounce that to kind of get eliminate all the shadows and just be softer source of light because you're effectively making it into a bigger source of light by bouncing it then yeah i guess that's the best way to use the dome yeah it's not really directional it's just kind of like light goes everywhere and now everything is lit <laughs> um <laughs> I, well there are i shouldn't say that because there are magmod users who use the uh, the sphere for like background. very directional oh. indoors or outdoors like punch of light yeah i think even controlled. on their instagram story the other day they used the mag uh see you want to say mag, mag, mag sphere. sphere the mag sphere to kind of make the the light a little bit more even as a background source I believe they used it recently. That's one purpose I could think of, I guess. Yeah, I mean you can put it, you can put it anywhere. You can get really crafty with the magma stuff. The point is that it's really like quick. Oh yeah, simple. we were trying to shake it off, but. I, oh yeah. How would, how would he do that? I don't. I'd have to shake the shit out of this, yeah. and I'd like my money back. Yeah, on yeah. Turn. So I'm not gonna do that. It's not going anywhere. Hey, shake that shit. That's a prototype. Nope, that tilted. That that exerted a lot of energy, guys. Oh. So I'm not gonna do that again. <laughs> We shot like twice today in hot conditions. Yo, someone who gets the best meme out of that gets a. Uh, <laughs> I'll send you a twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card. Yeah. Don't do that. Well, this kind of works. The grid. Yeah. Wait, See, that's the uh, Godox, the Godox grid. grid. Yeah, it looks like the Godox head is a little bit larger than the Pro Photo. 
Yeah, it feels like it's just... Which means for everybody who said, like, you can put the grid on the Pro Photo A1, or I'm sorry, the Mag Grip on the Pro Photo A1, you should definitely not do it on the V1 because it's bigger. It's going to make it tear even faster. But yeah. Mm, is the Sony is the A1 Sony mount metal or plastic? We don't know. We don't have them. Yeah, yet. we don't have it yet. Soon. Hopefully metal. Yeah. But yeah, if you guys can watch my video on the V1. Oh, uh, yeah. CJ, there's some things that I, I touch upon. V1. But there are like in this video, if you guys want to, I, I'll do my best to kind of like leave what's it called, little bookmarks or what's it called, timestamps, timestamps. Oh, timestamps in the description. Timestamps of like when we talked about like the technical aspects, like the duration, the flash duration of both of these lights, as well as the color temperature and the power output. But I would say that there were some instances in in high speed sync where this was stronger, the V1, or they're just on par. They're like so close. They're so close. So it's not worth saying one's yeah. better than the other, I guess. Yeah. So I actually I tested the high speed sync meter. Uh, I metered them in high speed sync to see which lost more light. And out of the two, we got. Yeah, the Pro Photo A1 lost 0.4 stops of light more than the V1. But, but I know that Siconic, when a new product comes out, they have to modify their firmware for the HSS. And considering the V1 isn't out and the A1 isn't exactly. It's not old, but it's not new. Um, I don't know that the. The, the HSS system has been updated for either of those, so take those numbers with a grain of salt. So yeah. It's just not... Somebody's quickly asking about the battery life. The battery life on the Godox V1 is rated at 650 full power shots, which is on par with the V862. And the Pro Photo A1 is rated at one poorly well poorly thought out stream. <laughs> that's that's the battery life on the Pro Photo <laughs> A1. It's rated at 350 full power shots, but we're... I'd be shocked we're, if you got We're that. experiencing much much less. I'd be shocked. And also, how, let me, can I see the battery? How hot it is? That's that's too much. You know, I man, I don't you have got a thermometer. Yeah, I was about to say if we had like a far like scientific thing where you could just touch the determine the heat. This is too hot. Isn't Ashley in medical? She has a thermometer. Thermometer. Could he be able to do that? I don't know. Ask her if she has like. To a be continued. Temporal. Tell him about the event. Uh, you just did. I I don't think I did it right. <laughs> We're going to be in Dallas. We've got uh, some different setups, different setups that we'll be going through with lighting. I think it's going to be pretty loose structure in terms of education, but just, you know, general networking, having a good time, getting some great shots. Along that line, there's going to be a retouching portion and a shooting portion. And yeah, I've actually, I've not spent much time in Dallas. I kind of came through for just a few days once, so really excited gonna be awesome to be around all those people see i knew she would have this she said she just raise it over it and then push start like raise it over it and then is that real probably i don't know hunter this is 100 and... 101 degrees this is like i don't know if it's that scientific but 101 see. isn't that hot i mean we're talking like a fever here but it, it's weird considering it's doing nothing. It's doing nothing at all. Like, oh, it's on standby. It's got, it's Maybe. display is active sometimes and it's, yeah, it's warm to the touch. Yeah, it's warm to the touch when it's doing nothing at all. Fired once at the lowest output of two. So take that however you want it. I'm disappointed that you guys don't have heat center sensors. Just Sorry. dropped in. Is that a pregnancy test? Yeah, we're expecting. <laughs> Yeah, he's well, from Michigan. I'm from Texas. We're gonna make it work somehow. Yeah. You see, I'm just gonna try this one more time. 103.9 now. It's getting hotter. So let me see. We're just talking for those that are just, just joining. In. This Pro Photo A1 has done absolutely nothing for the better part of an hour and a half. It's fired at its yeah. lowest output once, and it's for some reason losing battery like crazy, and also is hundred and yeah it's why years. it's why this this live stream's continuing because we wanted to see how long it would last until yeah we're gonna end it when it dies but maybe a little bit sooner because <laughs> she's watching us yeah she's out there <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> about getting us some views <laughs> has the pro uh the godox v1 been on this whole time no i don't want to uh, lie to anybody you it's, just it shut has, it off we turn it on turn it off but i mean it was on for like the first i time. can get like my security camera 
and like put it in front of it, leave it on, and I'm then just sit here and see just it. like flash it into the corner. Do it, yeah. So put, put, put it on GTL. Put it on like on high or something, maybe. Do you want to see when the uh, the heat protect? Yeah, it kicks in. You could do that. We've never done that. We'll see that. We'll we'll do a lot, like, live demonstration of when the the overheat protection. Over, yeah, overheat protection. I want to say it's like thirty or forty. Why did I forget how that there? <laughs> I haven't used this like you have. I have. Oh, yeah, you didn't get it. I didn't get to keep mine. I did. Bam. Shout yeah. out to Pergear. Thank you guys for letting me uh, test out the prototype. Asking for suggest They actually asked me for suggestions, but I don't think they have like a final say on that. So. Suggestions about what? I like what to do? Like what to change? About it, yeah. Huh. I, don't, I honestly don't think... Yeah. yeah, you definitely don't have a say because it's coming out like two it's days. It's coming out. Now. It's already like we're getting sent to Sony version soon. So yeah, um, but if you guys want to see, well, I'll do. We'll think for you. I was just asking you like, what do you want to see when it comes with the Sony version? But we'll, we'll do the test. You'll do the test. I'll link to his video. I'll, I'll give him a shout out in his video, to his video in my video, and I can only expect the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. So lots of people are saying overheat that sucker. I'm trying. I think I, I'm at, I don't know if anybody's counting at home, I think I'm at like Hi guys, do you not perhaps run air TTL on the A1 that drains battery, but why would you turn it off if you, if you intend to use it with it? Yeah. We, in other words, we have, we have had, um, throughout, in, throughout the testing period, what I want to say is we tested both the Godox V1 with the uh, wireless transmitter radio, radio um, slave mode on. And the Profoto A1 with the same, you know, Air TTL radio on, and tested the exact same thing. And the Godox V1 still had three bars on it, and the Profoto A1 was like what, almost dead. Got it. Okay. Keep overheating. Yeah, there you go. The little symbol. Yeah, we're we're overheating. Well, uh, did you can't keep track of the? I think I got to like twenty eight or twenty nine. Somewhere it was between twenty five and thirty. Just we watched the video. Yeah. Someone go back and give us a formal count on that. I don't think that's 13, 14, 15. I don't think it was 15. It was more than that. No, it was more than 15 for sure. I definitely. Oh, we finally saw the bar trap. The what? The bar tattoo now. From uh, from testing it and doing a full photo shoot with it. Oh, we got Yeah, second bar. Gotcha. Finally. Yeah, it's definitely living up to its uh, 650. Now, I forget. Does this work? <laughs> if I just go like that. Is it still in heat protection mode? One one thousand, two one thousand. Nope. That's how. If you want to live life on the edge, <laughs> if you want to push your battery to An the edge. Another way thing that you we know, don't We this. don't. We don't re recommend. But uh, that's one way to solve if you're annoyed by that pesky AF assist and you need to capture something that's about to happen. Yeah, it, it went into overheat protection mode. We we took out the battery, put it back in, and yeah, we then have to we delete this video now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm don't advise joking. you do that. Yeah. Do not do that. Do at your own risk. I will say, this sucker is hanging on to this like last... Yeah, I, okay, I will admit, I thought I was going to die sooner, but it's it, maybe it hurt us, and it was like, I got you. I will, I will survive. You guys will last one hour 45. Yeah, but the whole... Yeah, saying that turning air on drains the battery is like saying like turning the light on drains the battery. Like, that's a function you need for, yeah. the, <laughs> for the light... <laughs> To operate. I need to see what wow, the bat, the light's gonna. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a function to use the 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 light itself. So it's if like you saying... want to use this remotely, yeah. you have to have air on. I get what you're saying. Maybe yeah. it'll last longer on camera, but uh, but for your operation function to kill the battery this much is just that's bad. Yeah, I that's understand. Terrible. Imagine I under... you had this at a, on a stand at a wedding. For, yeah, for what? Four hours. I was about to say I understand. The, that viewpoint, but I use I use my lights off camera every single time I use off camera flash, like I use a flash. I use it off camera. I never use it on camera, ever, unless maybe at an event, which I don't do anymore. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking if I have this on a stand at a wedding in a corner where they are, or yeah, even at an they event, they are pushing yeah. this product to that demographic. Yes, exactly. You're right. Yeah. And you what? You you go to sit down for dinner and you're it, it's oh it's over. You use it. You shot it thirty times, but it had to sit for an hour through dinner, and now it's said, oh that last bar is gone. Any minute now. Did you, you didn't flash it right now? Right? No, I didn't flash Ooh. it. Just... I said an hour and forty five. I was guessing. 
Yeah, so you're yeah. talking like we're talking like three hours of standby time that this thing has, maybe less. Yeah, I know. On. I know it was like around half, and now after an hour and almost thirty eight minutes, it's almost like depleted that half. Client can wait. It's pro photo, damn it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much my light costs? Okay, you wait for it. If you guys know about the the cost of the battery, let us know because next thing you know, the battery is more than the A one. Yeah, that's that's quite <laughs> the, a the V one. You got it. Still got it wrong. When is Dallas? Uh, this Saturday, thirteenth. Yeah, I'm going to Dallas tomorrow, but I can't hang out tomorrow. I gotta help set shit up. Yeah, and, and I'm taking a ten hour bus ride to Dallas. Yeah, he's gonna make it worth it. We did, we did um, film. We did a couple shoots while he was here, and he's the most I shot in two days. I made it worth it. I made his trip worth it. This was like pretty light shooting for me it's light shooting for him but i don't i should i live in texas you live in michigan yeah but that have to do there i can't stand the heat oh <laughs> yeah i cannot be out there every day like this i'm exhausted i don't ever go out unless there's a photo shoot happening that's just as honest right there or maybe a family event where are you guys located right now my place francisco's house south texas that's it represent i don't know represent texas <laughs> No, Michigan, over here. <laughs> Leaving the but yeah, uh, if you guys have any last questions, uh, I guess what we can do right now, because I feel like that thing's gonna die anytime soon, is give like a last a recap. Um, no, these guys that have stuck through. Yeah. Okay. Well, they, people they who maybe just skip to the very end, I guess. Don't do that. If you if watch, you just skip towards the, the end, content. like you want to see the last couple of seconds, and you're like, oh, I don't. Maybe the recap. I can wrap it up in ninety seconds. All right, Godox V1 and the Pro Photo A1 are pretty much identical in terms of power output. They are pretty much identical in terms of feature set. They are pretty much identical in terms of capabilities, compatibility with off-camera products, and the like. They have the same zoom range. Um, they are roughly the same size. There's not very much different about them other than the massive price tag. $1,000 for this, $250 for the Godox V1. Um, if we're getting into finer points and we're starting to split hairs, the Pro Photo A1 has slightly better CRI, slightly better at rendering color. It is one, what is it? one point. Saying? That's a lot. One point in CRI oh, okay. world. Right. It's it's substantial. Um, the the uh, color on the Pro Photo is a slightly lower Kelvin temperature. It's around 5800 to 5600. Although it has a wider range of variants, less lower color consistency than the Godox V1, which is a cooler temperature up at around 6100, but does not move at all. Like it always stays within 100 Kelvin. The Godox V1, I'm still like sitting here and like wonder <laughs> if I get the name right. The Godox V1 has a much faster minimum flash duration, uh, much faster, like, like triple. Um, yeah, it's, triple. It's beyond impressive how fast of a flash duration that V1 gets, such to the point that I'm going to write Psychonic and make sure that that's accurate because that's just, I've never that's tested good. anything with those Let numbers. Them know. Let them know. Yeah, it's, it's truly, like truly that. impressive. Uh, yeah, beyond that, the magnetic modifiers are about roughly the same strength and compatibility. They do not fit each other perfectly. Again, I wouldn't say perfectly, but. But like the you know you like throw a grid on it and maybe so if you're looking for some cheap pro photo accessories for your A1, what flip this around? Oh no, there when you had it right. No, I had that's it. That's right. me. Um, yeah, they're they're about the same. The Godox is a tiny bit stronger. That's not scientific. That's it's just a, a feel test. Yeah, I um, felt it stronger. Yeah. Speaking of feeling, this shit's hot. 104 degrees right now. Not doing anything. <laughs> Apparently, let's see if I was right. I, I ballparked that 104. We're doing a temperature test. That's pretty impressive. Error. 103.1, and then it said error, so let me turn it off. 103.3. 103.3. Hey. Let me see. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to check if it's in focus. Go to the bottom. I feel like it's so much hotter. On the bottom? Here. Yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> But 103.2, 103.3 right now. It's a pro. Congrats, guys. Um, somebody asked if we would recommend the Godox V1. Yes, easily. Easily. But again, you just have to take in the features and see if they're worth it to you. If they are, then get it. If they aren't, then stick with what you have. Boom. 
basically. Yeah, we talk we talk about gear all the time, and people think because we like them that that means that people need to have them, and that's not our feeling at all. We we try to yeah. spell it out to like, this is who it's for. Yeah. If that is tantalizing to you and worth the money, then buy it. Not just yeah. Buy 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 buy. Right now, I I w- my favorite strobe right now is the Godox V hundred or the Godox. AD400 Pro because of the size and the power that it provides and uh, sometimes I don't find myself using full power on the AD600 Pro so I feel like that that 400 watts of power watt seconds of power I feel like the AD400 Pro is perfect because it fits in my Peak Design backpack which I also put my two cameras in and I, I that's my favorite strobe right now I definitely recommend that strobe that's a good question will Godox update the V862 with the improvements for the V1 so he's talking about like the not necessarily the round head, but the interface improvements. Um, well, wait, did he say update? I don't know if you mean will they update as in firmware or refresh the V860 version 2. I definitely don't think they'll refresh it. So. Um, and I don't think that they'll update it either because, uh, A, the controls aren't really designed for it. Like, the reason that the the V1 can, can have that different set of controls is because the center pad is a D-pad and... A, oh, yeah. and a scroll dial whereas the v860 isn't so there's really not the room to yeah exactly you're push right. all those controls onto the v860 version 2 you yeah. have to have those buttons watch have dual either purposes. of our videos you'll see what we mean about the scrolling with the 10th increments mm-hmm. point, point 0.1 increments or using the d-pad that's in the center of it to push down and push up to go down those full stops will the dual 200 be comparable to the 400 yeah it's really close in power it's like you can't even yeah, like I think even in your video it was like right I, exactly. Yeah, right it there. was on the dot. Yeah, um, I love the double eighty two hundred. Yeah, eighty B two modularity for anybody who tries to say that Godox copies. It's like show me who else made something that good. Eighty B two. Yeah, eighty B two and eighty two hundred. Eighty two hundred like, itself. That's the reason they're so popular. Thank you, Julio. You're welcome. Um, what else do we got? Hope, I'm hoping it's dead already. I don't think it is. I feel is. like we're repeating too much. Oh, it died! It died! It died! Yay. It died. Yeah, we're like clapping. Play congratulations. It died. Holy congratulations. crap. Congratulations. Hour and 45 minutes of nothing was killed. That's like half battery life, right? That was from a little bit over half. A little bit over half. I think, yeah. It was like 55, 60%. Well, we, re- we saw in the video. Yeah. We recorded it. I can't remember. Tell wow. us, can anybody else remember? We talked about it <laughs> We we made a ten hour piece of, a ten minute piece of content last hour and forty five. It was minutes. it was fun, right? It was guys? worth it. It was fun. Yeah, we're yeah. glad you guys stuck around. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, guys it's for definitely watching. dead though. Like nothing's happening. Um, yeah. Dude, put put the thermometer here, on the inside here. Holy shit! The amount of times. <laughs> it says high. it just says high. That's how hot it is. It's too high. That is freaking warm though. That's like the inside of the device, though. It doesn't even want to give me a reading. It just says high. It just says high. It's too high for this thermometer. Go to the hospital. I'm a- <laughs> That's probably what it's probably for, like, kids. Oh. And it's saying that the temperature is too high. If we had an actual, like, thermometer that doesn't say, like, go to the hospital, then... Yeah. You know, I'm assuming that's what that means. What's good is that we could see whatever Tommy Tippy thermometer says is, you know, past where it says to says high. And we can see... Yeah, what's the threshold for a child's fever? Because this is hotter than that. <laughs> yeah, so the, it's definitely hotter than 103.3. Yeah. It's probably in like the one. Anything range. above 104 is high. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, yep, we it's are. for kids. <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. We're not going to end this like abruptly like right now, but it died on us. And that's the, that was the timer. It, it yeah. gave a good... No, I, no, no I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It didn't, didn't put up a good did, fight. This is not, really it, bad for flash equipment to fail on this level. Wow. Uh, and, and I just feel the warmth on it. What? All right. You guys, we already set a recap. We already set his event. Subscribe to Rob. His channel is Robert Hall Photography. You can find him on Instagram at Robert Hall Photography. Rob Hall Photo. Uh, I'll link to all his social media in the description area below because he's definitely worth following. I seriously watch this stuff when I need to prepare a video. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> It's full of knowledge. That's my point. I'm not saying like I'm copying or anything, but it's just full of knowledge. And it kind of like, I don't know. I'm very non-technical. He's very technical. 
So we both have our styles and I, I don't want to give bad information. So if I need to know information, I'll either ask him directly or I'll, I'll watch his videos because I don't want to disturb him. He's alive. He's a very busy guy. But yeah. As I chill with you in Texas for three days. <laughs> we, we made videos. Yeah. We filmed. We did go to work. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Again, Robert Hall Photography. I'll link to all his social media in the description area below. If you like this video, give it a like. If Please. You, if you're a portfolio user and you did not like the video, give it a like twice. No, dislike it twice. You'll see. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, subscribe, like, comment, give us your thoughts. And if you watched the entire video, let us know what you thought. It was pretty fun. I thought so. But yeah, see you guys later. We'll see you in our Instagrams and our YouTube channels. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.